Hey folks, Daniel here. Um, I just got back from the first day of PyCon Germany 2016 and I just wanted to do a quick video for all you guys who you know can't attend and would like to know what it's like to be at a PyCon or maybe you've never been at a tech conference you're really interested you know what what it's like how how it all works. So well the first thing you you do is uh, essentially on the first morning morning or first day of the conference you you check in or you register and they give you a um, badge so I know the vi video quality is probably not going to be the best but like this is my my badge um, and you just wear that all day so you you know you don't get kicked out and people can see your name and they kind of know what you do so I tried to be a smart ass and I actually had an em emoji in my tagline here and a Python mystery. It's this uh, Python mystery dictionary example that I shared on Twitter a while ago. Anyway, um, it worked fine, printed nicely, and it was, um, I thought it was gonna be a nice conversation starter, but people were like, okay, I can't read that, right? <laughs> so like that didn't really work. Um, I'm, a, I'm a speaker this time, so my talk's gonna be tomorrow. I'm going to talk about um, entrepreneurship and a small uh, app that I built as a prototype for the Shopify App Store. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about that talk tomorrow. So I want to do some more prep work uh, tonight for that. And yeah, so I, when you're a speaker, you get this, you know, usually they call it out on the badge. So um, I found that that's actually a pretty good conversation starter. Like a lot of people ask me about, you know, what's your talk going to be on? And um, yeah, it doesn't hurt. So you run around with that all day and it's always good you know to look at people's badges so that's a lot easier to remember their name so I found that there are so many people from all over Europe here right now which is really really cool like I met so many cool people you know from uh, Slovenia from Russia from France Spain Germany everywhere and um, I I really like that diversity so um do, do, do. Let's see. Okay, so the other thing that we all got was this um, fantastic PyCon bag, which which actually looks pretty cool. I mean, you know, some a lot of times with the conference bags, you don't really know <clears throat> what you're what you're getting into. But I I really like this. Like this could be a good gym bag. I don't know. And uh, there's a ton of stuff in there so you know free advertisement for all these wonderful people um yeah so there's stickers and uh, like a conference uh schedule like this tiny little magazine and you know free pens what's that yeah a bunch of pens and then basically all the companies they're they're advertising uh their their services and their stuff right so i got this little uh pie charm wristband which is kind of nice i wish i wish i would have gotten one uh that says sublime text i don't know maybe i should i should make those i don't know um anyway yeah that's awesome so there's a bunch of of these things and then we got our conference t-shirts which again is pretty oh wait i gotta turn that around because it has a logo on it as well so those turned out pretty well too and it seems to fit okay so I'm excited about that too so it has a nice PyCon logo again and um, yeah that way everyone is gonna know you know who sees me that I'm a huge Python nerd and so it's good to have these these t-shirts um, okay yeah so and then right maybe talk let's I want to talk a little bit about I don't know my my what I do when I attend a conference because um, one thing that I notice is that the real value for going to a conference I actually notice that for me it's changing more and more where I I feel like I'm getting more out of just hanging out in the hallway and talking to people and out of the coffee breaks than I'm getting from going to the actual sessions I I went to a couple of sessions today because. Like frankly, it just completely exhausts me to talk to people all day. Like I'm, I'm, uh, I need, just need some time to recover, and uh, so I spend a lot. Of, but I spend a lot of time talking to people today, and I feel like I can just watch the videos and everything uh, after the conference. But uh, nevertheless, I went to a couple of talks that were uh, were really interesting, actually. So there's this other 
piece of swag that we got from a company here. Um, it's like a free moleskin or moleskine or yeah, I, I don't know how you pronounce those, but you know, a notebook and you can write stuff in it. So like usually what I do, I always bring a fresh uh, notebook or just some, some uh, paper to write my notes on. And then I will do um, like one, just a one pager with some handwritten notes on any um, session that I go to. And then I usually have um, a page at the end where I just take notes on the conversations that I had, right? So I know, I kind of know who I talk to, maybe, you know, what they're interested in what they're doing with Python, where they're from, maybe their contact info if I don't like exchange contact info with them right away. And then I found that really helps. So I'm probably gonna run into a bunch of these people um, tomorrow again. And then I have just, you know, a way to connect with them again, even if I don't actually go and like, you know, take out my notebook and then look up their information, that would be kind of awkward. But um, just the act or the fact that I'm writing this down really helps me memorize. So I started doing this and um, it's great that I don't have to use my own notebook for this, but I can use the free one. So I'm enjoying that. Um, yeah, so the other thing is that I I always bring some uh, business card. Oh, you can't, maybe you can't see this. So I always bring some business cards and um, I, I got these like small ones. So I, you know, I just put them in, carry them around with me and then you know, if sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it's easier to, to just follow each other on Twitter or maybe exchange email addresses. But um, I actually found that it's nice if you have some business cards and you can just make sure you're not losing like a critical connection that you make with someone. And um, also like in terms of how do you connect with people at a conference, I found that um, it's definitely a skill that needs to be practiced. I mean, I, I would say that by default, I'm I'm pretty introverted and so definitely um yeah it always takes you know takes a little bit just to gear up and like feel comfortable chatting up strangers and and talking to them but um I a I want to say you get a lot better with practice and then B what I did what I didn't do today but what I used to do is like just give me a, a you know some kind of quota where it's like okay you got to talk to you know have like a conversation with five people today or 10 people. It doesn't matter about what, but it just really gets you out of your comfort zone and gets you in touch with these people. And I found the first person you have, you, you chat with in the morning, that's that's usually all you need to get started on your day. And then it's, it, you know, it's just, it just goes. And it's always fun to meet people and hear what they're up, uh, up to. And, um, and yeah, so that's also why I carry those, right? Like sometimes it's just easier to hand out a business card um, than it is to use other apps or try and memorize someone's email address or maybe you write it down incorrectly and yada 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 so uh, i don't know like and maybe it makes makes me look a little bit more professional i don't know um and uh and yeah so like i said it was a really good first day it was some good lunch too lots of coffee and um let's see maybe i can share some of the things that that I took away from going uh, to these sessions like like I said um, I am I'm starting to notice that I'm getting more value out of going around talking to people than I'm I feel like I'm getting value out of sitting down in these sessions because I could just watch a video right I mean you can't talk it's it's good to talk to the people who are uh, to the speakers afterwards so I think that that's why I like to go like going to some sessions but um, in a lot of cases um there's just not a lot of value that i get out of these sessions so I, I try to be picky about that and then rather spend some more time in the hallway chatting with people so anyway so in terms of stuff that i found interesting today um there was a really good talk by uh dimitri trofimov i think pronouncing that correctly he works for JetBrain, so he works on pycharm and um he had he gave a really nice overview on uh, profiling in in python he was actually talking about a bug that um or like some performance issue in the actual PyCharm debugger that they were then profiling with a bunch of different profiling tools to narrow down what the issue was and then fixed it. And I always like these kind of story-based, um, almost post-mortem kind of talks. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, 
There was, oh yeah, the lightning talks, they're always fun. Um, someone was talking about EuroPython, which is the other, or like another big Python conference. Um, it's going to be in Italy next year, I believe. Um, someone was talking about PyCon Namibia, which seemed pretty fascinating too. And then I learned about Koala, which is like a multi-language static code analysis tool, which um, seems like a really cool idea. So you can basically um, run it on a project that is that uses uh, not just Python, but several uh, languages, other languages. And then Koala is going to figure out what tools to run on what um, pieces of the code. And I thought that was a pretty neat idea. Um, there was a really good keynote by Daniele Prochida, I think. That's how to pronounce his name. We're talking about kind of how we have this attitude as open source developers to think that, you know, if there's a bug, we're obligated to fix it for free. Like he was, I'm, you know, having a hard time like kind of summarizing this in like two or three sentences. But um, essentially, he was talking about that it, it is maybe not a good attitude to expect that um, all of these open source projects and the, the authors of these projects that they're obligated to maintain these projects forever. And a lot of people actually expect that and get sometimes they get really angry when they're submitting bug reports. And I experienced some of that my, myself with some of the projects that I uh, did, you know, where, where uh, people are, are just pissed off at you because they're using your free software and they found a bug or maybe it doesn't have a feature that they wanted and they, they can't deal with it and they lash out. I mean, 99% of people are awesome and like super supportive and friendly, but you always get someone who's just has this like sense of entitlement, right? And and so Daniele was saying that, well, maybe that attitude should change where like the default should be, okay, don't really expect me to support this. Sure, I created it, but I'm not obligated to support it. And I don't know, I haven't really made up my mind yet on this, but I thought it was a pretty good, good, um, yeah, no, it was just a really good talk, like a really good, like story driven, very emotional, heartfelt talk. So yeah, highly recommend that talk. Um, there was a small session on, uh, I think the title was like Doctor I Can't Stop Coding, <laughs> something like that about how it's better to write less code and it was kind of fun. Um, there was a really good session, it was more like an interactive kind of conversational style talk instead of like a presentation um, where, where someone was talking or was speaking about um, or kind of leading a conversation on um, the human factors of developer productivity. So, you know, we, he covered a lot, of, a lot of things like, okay, you want to make sure your blood, blood sugar levels don't fluctuate too much because that there's like scientific research that shows that this kills your willpower and you should try and keep it as stable as possible. And he's actually, he actually bought some of the, the Soylent stuff, which is like, like a super protein shake, right? Where it's like, you buy this and it's this goop and it it's like a replacement for your meals and you just eat that instead of i don't know eating a proper meal or cooking a proper meal and uh, he was experimenting with that and he kind of uses that when he's really busy with work and he needs to just hunker down get something done then he will have like drink that during the day just to kind of keep his his uh, blood glucose on um on the same level and then he found he found that he was more uh, productive and you know how hydration is super important and yeah i thought that was really interesting um he was also talking about how drinking coffee apparently there's um, a lot of research that shows that coffee um, consumption or caffeine consumption really relates to um people getting anxiety and you know this nervousness and now actually i noticed some of that today because i had so much coffee today just from hanging out all day and talking to people just drinking more coffee and um i i felt pretty frazzled after a while like just, you know just like having after having too much caffeine and just feeling like super hyper and i think like this really inspired me actually to go back and maybe do a no coffee experiment for a month a year i don't know i should probably do this for at least like 90 days for it to be effective so um yeah lot, lots of good stuff in in that and i think it was recorded so i'll try and like put that in the description at some point 
Um, yeah, I really don't want to ramble on too much, but um, day one was a success. Really looking forward to my talk tomorrow. And I'm um, going to do some more prep work, just rehearse my talk a bunch more times so that it's really tight and I'm below the 30-minute the limit. And then uh, hopefully I can share that with you soon as well because I think it's going to be recorded. All right, cool. Well, that's it from PyCon Germany 2016, day one.